Lake St. Clair. Lake St. Clair. Lake St. Clair. You know, 40% of our state's drinking water comes from Lake St. Clair. And the smell of it is just god awful. This is our water. This is what we drink. Guys, this is bad. And I want you guys to see this and smell this for yourself. Um, Lake St. Clair is suffering from several different issues. One issue uh, that bothers me personally a lot is legacy contaminants, that there were contaminants dumped over many years, uh, dumped in various parts of the watershed that have made their way into Lake St. Clair. So the sewage, uh, there, for many, many years, raw sewage would go into the lake. Now it's, it's permitted discharge that the state allows from Oakland County's got 13 communities that dump down the Clinton River. Warren has problems. East Detroit has problems, or East Point, Roseville. Half of this city's combined. We have to fix this, and it's big dollars. And until we do that, this lake will be, a, will be a combined sewer overflow tank for this area. Not enough has been done in terms of monitoring. There's been a little bit but not enough time and, and money spent on monitoring to find sources of pollutants that are making their way into Lake St. Clair. And as a result, there's a fish advisory and you can't even eat the fish. You're, you can eat a couple fish a year to be safe, which is almost pointless. Why even bother? I mean, you can't, if you can't eat the fish safely. And then when contaminants are found, it takes a very long to clean up and that's partly political and partly money, but it, it should be done much faster. If some contaminants are found, why does the process take so many years? With the uh, various dislocations that are associated with what we call neoliberalism now, this uh, period of uh, disciplining labor and, and imposing social austerity on our communities and cutting back regulations and cutting taxes and uh, imposing a top-down vision of capitalism that enriches very few and uh, impoverishes a lot. Uh, since the 1980s, we've had we've seen the renewed threats. We've seen the withdrawal of resources. We've seen um, out of control capital and corporate uh, autocracies really being given the reins of our society by the governments that supposedly work for us, and we are now in a lot of trouble. Again, I'll pull up what just happened with Nestle. How the hell? Could we give a company a permit for only $200 to use 400 gallons of our water per minute that they turn around and profit from in the billions, in the billions? Politicians are talking, talking, talk. I was water quality board chairman for 14 years for this county. I had senators, congressmen, I met three presidents. I traveled all over the country. I lobbied the House and the Senate in Washington. I was at a water meeting almost every day trying to get funds to clean this up. We got the drains cleaned up, we got the ditches cleaned up, but now it's the, it's the permitted discharges. Sewage will back up, including into basements. This is controversial, political, and emotional. Look at this. You can see all this crap is in here. to the point where we literally are poisoning 40% of our, our drinking water to the state of Michigan. You're not only dumping the poop, you're dumping the prescription pills that everybody's taking. All that is mixed into this giant pot, one big brewing pot, it's affecting our fishery, it's affecting our, our quality uh, drinking water. So we've talked to all these mayors and said, look, I know you can't do this overnight, it's very expensive, but you either have to separate or we have to build a bigger retention and we have got to have a plan. So we are working with all of them. We need to separate sewage. And until we do that, there's no fix, and it's $4 billion. And officials are gonna tell you, oh, we're gonna change the laws. We got the laws. The DEQ cannot enforce the laws to these cities unless they have money to fix it. And there is no money. Just like there's no money for roads. This system is so out of balance. And the ideas that are uh, driving it from the dominant perspective are so whacked. They're just so crazy that helping people to come to grips with that situation, almost like triage right now is all you can do, you know, like a triage in an emergency room when you have to decide who's, gonna, who's capable of being saved. 
and let some things die. That's that's where the action is right now. I mean, it's horrible to say it, but that's, you know, it, look around you. That's what's happening. I had my guys go back and look at how many gallons of CSOs that we, in Macomb County, we've uh, put in, in the, since, uh, I think, 2014, which is 1.8 billion gallons. Now, I'm just telling you, I'm being very open with you. Oakland County has done five times that. Over five billion. And I had a meeting with Jim Nash, who's the Water Resources Commissioner in Oakland County. He's my counterpart there. Nice guy. Good guy. I like this guy. I said, Jim, you are our friend. You are our neighbor. We love Oakland County. But neighbors don't normally dump their sewage on their neighbor's head. Okay? So you need to educate your folks so that they even understand what's happening because they're getting their drinking water out of here as well. And the problem is everybody knows about it. And the problem is it's just so big to take on that it's almost unfixable. So how is a politician who's going to be in a, in a place for a two to four year period of time going to really get the movement or, or momentum to, to make the laws, to change the laws, to get the people behind them to support them that, hey, we have to update our infrastructure. I will be the first to state this on camera. If there's only two options, people's basements flood up or you put it in a lake, you put it in a lake. But why has there never been an option three, option four, option five ever in place? Why have we not worked towards having our own system in place that could stop this? We overpopulated the areas we can, we can handle and grow, and that you have two options. Either you dump the sewage in people's basements or you dump it in a lake. And I'll be the first to say that that's your only two options and you dump it into the lake. But why is there not an option C, D, E, F? Why are we not updating our infrastructure to handle our population? If we need to have five wastewater treatment plants in the, in the county of Macomb, let's put five wastewater treatment plants. I think that, you know, the emergence of the uh, second or third wave of environmentalism uh, since the 60s, the 70s, and the environmental justice movement of the last 20 or 30 years gives some ground for hope, but it's such a struggle. And it's so subject to uh, forces that not only are beyond our power, but in many cases we don't even understand. And when you look at the global crisis that we're in with not only climate change, but species loss, toxification of water, um, and its interactions with the economic system and the need for resources and the need to feed billions of people and so forth and so on, it's very scary. It's a very scary time. There's very good reason why the so-called doomsday clock is closer to 12 o'clock than it's ever been, both because of the, the danger of uh, you know, spreading wars and also because of the threat to the, the uh, biosphere. Years ago, they believed that, that dilution was the solution to pollution. It's not. There's too many people. There's too much pollution. You know, you can't, in 94 when I started, they dumped six billion gallons in one year. You know how much a billion gallons is? Take 11 miles of the Clinton River, 200 feet wide and 10 feet deep. That's, that's, that's one billion. Uh, government itself completely in denial that there's anything wrong with spraying toxic chemicals along the lake shore. And the politicians need to go get the money, get off their dead asses and fix this mess. They go, they want to blame DEQ because, because DEQ allows this to happen. No, it's politicians that allow this to happen. The truth is you shouldn't have faith in these leaders. They've screwed it up. There's just not one problem. It's a multiplicity of different factors creating this arena of problems. They don't care about kids. They don't care about fishing. I don't know what they care about. I don't need to say anything more.